All right, in chapter four, lesson three, we're gonna start combining together the information we covered in lesson one and in lesson two. Okay, so first we're gonna look at trig functions of any angle. Now, for the first time, we are going to be taking our triangles and placing them on the coordinate plane. Now, in lesson two, we took our angles and placed them on the coordinate plane, and then we took out the restrictions that any angle has to be greater than zero and less than 180 degrees. Well, now we're gonna take our triangles and place them on the coordinate plane. And in doing so, it then takes away the restriction that all values or lengths of the legs have to be positive. Once you place them on the coordinate plane, a leg can be negative. So notice in our picture, we have an angle theta in standard position. Okay, the initial side is on the positive x-axis and the terminal side lies in quadrant three. Now, when you put a point on the terminal side, okay, you can draw a vertical line from that point to the x-axis and it creates a right triangle with that vertical length and a horizontal length on the axis. So we have a right triangle, okay, and our angle inside the triangle is going to fall close to the origin, okay? So we have our opposite side, we have our adjacent side, and we have the, my hypotenuse. So the opposite side, notice, falls vertically, which is representative of the y-coordinate of an ordered pair, okay? The adjacent side, is horizontal, so notice that falls on the x-axis. And then our hypotenuse is eventually going to be the radius of a circle, which is why we give that the name r. So instead of looking at the sides of a triangle as opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse, we have y, we have x, and we have r. So sine theta, my opposite side over the hypotenuse, would be the y value divided by the radius. Cosine, adjacent over hypotenuse, would be the x value divided by the radius. And then tangent, opposite over adjacent, would be the y value divided by the x value. And then we have our reciprocal functions that correspond to sine, cosine, and tangent. Now, what is this going to look like? An example one, letter A, says let negative four, three be a point on the terminal side of an angle theta in standard position. Find the exact values of the six trigonometric functions of theta. Okay, the first thing that I'm going to do is sketch that point on the coordinate plane. So negative four, three falls in the second quadrant. I'm gonna go left four units and up three units. So negative four, three, the point here. Now what I'm going to do is sketch an angle in standard position such that the terminal side goes through that point. So the vertex is at the origin, the initial side is on the positive x-axis, and the terminal side is going to go through that point, negative 4, 3. Now I can create a triangle using this point and the terminal side by dropping a line vertical to the, to the x-axis. Here's my point negative four, three. If I draw the line straight down, this creates a right triangle with the x-axis, the vertical line, and the terminal side of the angle. Right, I'm gonna go ahead and draw my right angle, and my angle theta is always the angle closest to the origin. And I know the lengths of my sides. My uh, horizontal side, I went left four units, so it has a length of negative four. My vertical side went up three units, so that length is a positive three. And I'm gonna use the Pythagorean theorem to find the hypotenuse, or, or R. Now, this is a Pythagorean triple, if you recognize it, three, four, five. So the length of my hypotenuse is five, which will always be positive. Okay, if you don't recognize the Pythagorean triple, then use the Pythagorean theorem. Now that I have all three sides, I can find the six trigonometric functions, making sure I pay attention to the, the sign, whether it's positive or negative. 
So sine theta is y over r, or opposite over hypotenuse. The opposite side is 3. My hypotenuse is 5. Okay, so cosecant theta is the reciprocal of sine theta, 5 thirds. Okay, cosine theta is x over r, or the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. Now, the adjacent side is negative 4, so make sure we include the negative. And the hypotenuse r is 5. So cosine theta is negative 4 fifths, and secant theta is the reciprocal of that, negative 5 fourths. Okay, okay tangent theta is y over x, or the opposite side to the adjacent side. Okay, y is 3, x is negative 4. So tangent theta is negative 3 fourths. The reciprocal of that, cotangent theta, is negative 4 thirds. Okay, I'm going to have you pause the video and try letter B. Okay, when you finish, hit play, and I'll go through letter B so you can check your work. All right, in letter B, we have let negative 2, negative 1 be a point on the terminal side of an angle theta in standard position. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw coordinate plane. Left 2 down 1 is going to put it in the third quadrant. So I'm going to make my units a little larger so I have a nice size triangle. So left 2 down 1. Okay, so my angle theta in standard position has vertex at the origin. Initial side on the positive x-axis, and the terminal side goes through my point, negative 2, 1. Now, to create my right triangle, I'm going to take a vertical line to the x-axis, and I now have a right triangle with my vertical line, the x-axis, and the terminal side of the angle. Okay, theta is the angle closest to the origin. And to get to this point, I went left 2 and down 1. So the opposite side is negative 1, the adjacent side is negative 2. To find the hypotenuse r, I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem. So I have negative 1 quantity squared plus negative 2 quantity squared is equal to r squared. Negative 1 quantity squared is 1, negative 2 quantity squared is 4, and that's equal to r squared. 5 is equal to r squared. When I take the square root of both sides, r is the square root of 5, and will always be positive. Okay, now that I have the, three, the lengths of the three sides, I can find the six trigonometric functions. So sine theta is y over r, or the opposite side to the hypotenuse. So that's negative 1 divided by square root of 5. I cannot keep a radical in my denominator. So I have to rationalize, multiplying the numerator and the denominator by radical 5. So sine theta is negative square root of 5 divided by 5. Okay. okay, cosecant theta is the reciprocal of sine theta. Now I'm going to start with negative 1 divided by radical 5. If I take the reciprocal of that, I have uh, radical 5 divided by negative 1, which is negative radical 5. Okay. Secant theta, I'm sorry, cosine theta, is x over r, or the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. So I have negative 2 divided by radical 5, and I'm going to rationalize, multiply the numerator and the denominator by square root of 5, and we have negative 2 radical 5 divided by 5. I cannot reduce my fraction, so this is the value of cosine theta. Secant theta is the reciprocal of cosine theta. So I'm going to take negative 2 over radical 5, find the reciprocal, which is negative radical 5, divided by 2. And that is simplest form. Okay. Tangent theta is opposite over adjacent or y over x. So tangent theta is negative 1 over negative 2, which is a positive 1 half. And cotangent theta is the reciprocal of that. 
The reciprocal of 1 half is 2 over 1, which is equal to 2. Okay, go ahead and turn the page. Next, we have quadrant angles. A quadrant angle is an angle in standard position whose terminal side lies on one of the coordinate axes. Now, we're just spending our time here for a moment on the first four quadrant angles, okay? The first one being the angle that lies on the positive x-axis. So both the initial side and the terminal side are on the positive x-axis. Okay, so this angle theta is zero degrees, okay? And zero degrees is zero radians. Now, if you make one revolution of the unit circle or of a, an angle, one revolution back to the initial side, okay, this could also be representative of 360 degrees. Now, in radians, if you multiply 360 times pi over 180, this is 2 pi radians. Okay, in the second picture, okay, we have a quadrant angle in which the terminal side is on the positive y-axis. Okay, this angle theta is 90 degrees. Okay, in radians, if I multiply 90 times pi over 180, this is pi over 2 radians. In my third picture, the terminal side lies on the negative x-axis, so this represents 180 degree quadrant angle. If I multiply that by pi over 180 degrees, this is pi radians. In the fourth picture, the terminal side lies on the negative y-axis, which is 270 degrees. If you multiply 270 degrees by pi over 180, this is 3 pi over 2 radians. Okay. Now, we're going to spend a little bit more time when we look at 4.3 day 2, looking at our quadrant angles and finding specific values of quadrant angles such as secant pi and cosecant 90 degrees. Okay, so for now, just make sure you know what a quadrant angle is and make sure you know what the angles are in degrees and radians.